Welcome to the Want to Learn Podcast. I'm your host, Francis Tapman. In this episode, I interview Alicia Carter and Randy Hart, who are both Peace Corps volunteers. I love talking with Peace Corps volunteers because they get a unique perspective on a country. They're not really an outsider, but they're not also an insider. They're kind of in between. They have a little bit of both because they're there for like two years, sometimes three years. In the case of Brandy and, and Alicia, they were there for three years. So they become a local in many ways. The locals just get used to them. They don't see them as much as a foreigner as they do, let's, let's say, a tourist who's coming by just for a week or less. Because they get so integrated, because they local, learn the local language, they get insights that no tourist can get. And so I love talking with them. At the same time, they're outsiders. They're outsiders because they know what America's like or the rest of the world is like. They've traveled. So they have something to compare it to. When you're talking to a local, it doesn't really satisfy me completely because they have nothing to compare it to. If they've just grown up their village all their life. So the Peace Corps volunteers have a nice balance in that sense. I'm Alicia Carter. I'm a Peace Corps volunteer in Lesotho, Southern Africa. Uh, I'm Brandy Hart. Uh, I've been here for two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got here in April of this year, so I've been here for seven months. Okay. I'm a primary school English teacher. I teach um, English to grade seven, and then I also am like a life skills educator. I lead like a, a boys and girls forum, after school forum. And I am with the Healthy Youth Program, so we were, are here to help work on the HIV endemic here. Um, Lesotho is the second highest prevalence rate of HIV. So oh, hi. it is 25% of the population um, around. It depends on the district, but it's about 24 in total. So that's one in four people. Um, it mostly impacts ages 18 to 25 in the more populated areas, such as Maseru, which is the capital. So our goal in this project is to, a lot of us do life skills, but is to in some ways get people to know the importance of knowing their status, to work with clinics, to work with village health workers, to do anything that can help raise awareness to that this is a really important issue in Lesotho. It's very detrimental to the development of Lesotho, along with many other things, but. Why, why is the prevalence rate higher than any other place on the planet? Um, Lesotho is small. It's really, it's really small. Um, so with so, so little people and such these cultural norms, people, um, the Basuchi people are very prideful. Um, you know, it, it was built with Meshwe Shwe the, the first and he created Basutu land and they really fought for their independence and they've never wanted to be a part of South Africa. So Basutu stand to what, what drives their culture and in some of those cultural values, it's, there's, there's some, there's some gender norms that have, you know, m multiple partners. A lot of men don't believe that they just need to have one wife. They can have a girlfriend too. And um, a lot, there's not a lot of health education with condom use or sticking to, sticking to, to being faithful. And then also just, um, you know, making sure your kids are getting educated on health. Um, it's, it's not as important because it just was absent. And so now that people are starting to see the importance and starting to get that health education, they're really changing the way that they live their lives um, in, in a lot of ways. So hopefully it's getting better. But I think that those norms of, you know, it's okay for a man to have four girlfriends and not disclose his status or not go get tested. A lot of people are scared. Um, and then it's very rural. I mean, 85% of the population lives in rural locations. And until recently, there wasn't clinics in those locations. And still, some people have dirt roads and difficult transportation to get to the clinic and take the ARVs. So the treatment is tough, too. Okay. And so it just it's easily transferred between people because of those things. Brandy. Yes. Tell me about an unseen side of Lesotho. That took you a while to figure out. Mm. Um, so during training, we had learned about um, these like initiation schools mm -hmm. that um, young uh, young boys mainly, um, mainly, but also like older men will go to for six to eight six to eight months out of the year. And um, you know, I'd heard stories about it, but I, I I just didn't really think about it. And then you know, as as a teacher. And, be, and being in school, and then some of my students stopped coming to class, and some of my boys, and it was like, well, 
Where, where's Libo Hung today? Oh, he ran away from home and went to initiation school. And so that was, um, and that took several months for me to like, like really understand and, and really see the like initiation schools, even though it's, um, the, the culture here is, is, is becoming like a little more like contemporary and everything, but like those, that, that tradition still, still exists. And to, to actually, um, be, be a part of that like residual effect from the, from the initiation school, that was, that's part of my NC and part of Wasu too, for sure. Um, so what about you? Um, Lesotho is really unseen. I, I think that as a Peace Corps volunteer here, when I, when I signed up, I had no idea what Lesotho was. I don't know if that was the same for you, but um, I, didn't know it was gonna be. <laughs> I thought it was pronounced Lesotho and everyone else did. And I even posted on Facebook that, you know, I had to choose between five countries and I, I liked the health program that they had here and I thought it was unique. So I said, does anyone know anyone who is from Lesotho or <laughs> Lesotho or what I don't know what it's called and you know I ended up getting a few responses and connections and I started hearing really good things about it and I said you know what let's give it a shot and so I came here and I mean your first impression of this country is we got out of the cars and the Bome are screaming Yay! like oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're screaming and dancing and they're wearing these bright dresses and it was really exciting. I mean, Vasuchu are very welcoming. Um, so, yep. <laughs> so, and then the country is gorgeous. And so I, I studied sustainable tourism as a part of my studies. And I mean, this country has so much to offer. It's, it's very unique. Um, and it may not be something that you see right away, but when you dive into it, you really get to know this unique culture. And my volleyball team even thought it was, they, you know, they say, where are you going? Are you going to get Ebola? And I said, no, I, I live in southern Africa. It's in the mountains. And they said, oh, is that that lake that I drew blue on the map? And, you know, the one in South Africa. And I said, that's a really big lake. It's Lesotho. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, it's Lesotho is unseen in itself. <laughs> but we really like it here. Cool. I mean, you're sticking around another year. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I love this country. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. What do I love about this country? I mean, I love that. Um, we live in a really beautiful place. Every, I mean, I have the best view it's I've ever had. It's aesthetically pleasing. Um, it's, yeah, aesthetically pleasing. And it may not be the mm. beach, you know? I, you grew up in California. I grew up in California. And I, didn't, I never lived beachfront. I mean, who does? So mm. to live like mountain front here and have this gorgeous like rolling hills and these big peaks. And I wake up every morning and the sun rises right above them. And it's just nice to take it in. It's really I, um, beautiful. What I love about this country is the the general lifestyle. Just like the pace of life here is um, really, really refreshing. And I think just just coming from you know, I, I never grew up in a city, but even like even in suburban areas and stuff, and even just like the pace of life in America is way too fast we're like really timely people things like that and, and just like it's just not like that here you know you set up a meeting at in the evening and that could be between three o'clock and eight o'clock and, and, and just like and you read a book and you're okay with that and you're just like i don't know it it, it may seem weird but it's just like you I, i've learned so much to just like like live in the moment here like you you have to be like that and to just like not have expectations for even like the next hour or the next day or the next month and I don't know it's just a very refreshing and like patient way of life and I can't I've imagine really adopted adopted it yeah. yeah going back home and trying to no way keep up oh, I would be so overwhelming yeah yeah, yeah. What, what drives you crazy about this country sometimes that public, pace of life um, public transportation public fucking transportation <laughs> fuck public transportation. I'm sorry if I'm not allowed to swear, but fuck public transportation. I swear to God. Complacency. Basutu are, are like really, really complacent people. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, and they're not very confrontational. Mm -hmm. And I think like, like as American, I mean, especially like us, we're, we're pretty con confrontational mm -hmm. people. And, um, and, um, like for example, if you get, you, you get in a, in a combi, you like have paid the driver, like it's his job to take you from point A to point B, right? And it's just like, 
even if the taxi is full, he will take his sweet ass little time. And it's just like, Basutu are just like, uh, whatever. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? Like, you just paid 110 Rand to go to this place. Like, what? I don't know. Can, can and we're going to get probably, there six hours later. I know. Oh, you man. Probably, you can probably add on, on public transportation. I mean, public transportation. transportation. They stick the tall person in the back oh, and they say it's okay. Yeah. And the tall person that's had knee surgery. And I'm like, I'm like uh, I guess. I'll sit back here because I don't want to make anyone upset. But, you know, we, we, we walk this thin line. But I've, over time, Brandy's kind of pushed me to step off of it a little bit. Because while people aren't com confrontational here, they'll, they'll take it if you give it to them. That's if you, true. If you say that, this forward. bothers yeah. me, mm -hmm. it, it might even change them. And that's something that in the workplace for me, in the, in the capital, when I go to my, so my office, um, I have to, I've had to adjust because it's a different kind of work ethic. But... I've also, I think, had an impact on how they, how timely they are, how much they check their email. Mm -hmm. um, so that drive me crazy at first, but now I'm adjusting. Um, How's it being blonde and blue-eyed? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, you stick out like, I mean, this is a fishbowl, and everybody's heard that term before, but I walk around town and people, I live in a camp town, it's kind of big, so people don't always know my name, but they still are like, Lehua, Lehua, and you know, and they call you the white person. And it's like the general term. I I think it sounds derogatory, but I mean, it's not, it's, but it's, yeah. it's technically not. Lehua just te can technically mean like foreigner, um, but I think having having these really distinguishable features of like blue eyes and blonde hair, like it's, you're not going to see that in Lesotho anywhere. But they um, love us. Like yeah. I mean, it's just you get you get like you know. You're not you're not only um, given privileges just being white, but like all like also like having these like rare features. It's like oh, you're like this precious thing. Yeah, you know, you get proposed to a know, lot. Oh, that is something I really hate. Bad. Actually, that's true. Yeah. Oh, they'll no, tell they'll tell you. Though. I have five cows. I love you. I love you. I want to marry you. Uh, and you say, you don't love me. I'm worth two thousand cows. And they'll say, I will get them. They will I'm come priceless. in payments. And you say, no, 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 I already have too many husbands in that day. I can't ha handle anymore. And they say, do you have one in every district? I will be your Mafetang husband. And I say, <laughs> and I say, no, in that day, I am, I am good. I have one in the U.S. too. I have to be faithful. And they say, but you are in Africa. You are in Lesotho. And yeah, <laughs> sometimes the men here are pretty hard. Pretty aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I don't like, I don't like the marriage proposals. Yeah, you think it'd be flattering, but it's not, it's not. But it's but they're not so aggressive as in to touch you and no no I've never I've um I, I personally have never been like sexually assaulted or anything I feel um, very safe here I very safe. I feel I feel very comfortable um but I I have learned to just um say no just or just stop you know just like I'm I'm not gonna play the nice girl like oh. Okay. Oh, hi, Bone Tate. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I won't marry. I'm like, no, fuck you. I'm not gonna marry you. Stop <laughs> asking me. And I can. I've learned enough susutu that I can like say yes, that. I'm, I'm, totally, <laughs> I'm totally comfortable saying that. Right. And so it's that's where you rubbed off. I mean. Yeah. They're like, whoa. First of all, she knows susutu. Second of all, she knows how to like tell me. And then they stop. say, why are you insulting me? Why are you yeah, insulting me? I yeah. just want to be your husband. Yeah. I've gotten really good at like ignoring people. Yeah. Am I making a difference? Um, you know, the funny thing about Peace Corps is it's, it's not like these tangible results that you see right away. Um, it's the, the mission is, you know, to promote peace and friendship and, you know, to create those bonds. And so you have to lower your standards of development and of what your experience will be like here from the get go. I mean, you learn that really early on and you become less less and less naive um, in your experience but you also become more and more open to what your life could be like and it becomes that slower pace it becomes you know and you you start to realize that the difference that you make is like in the girl that lives right in this house over there and comes in colors with me and then I teach a girls club at her school and the girls club is it might not be sustainable and continue but she'll always remember me and maybe do something because she met me and so if you can inspire like it's stupid to say, but you know that one kid. You'll do more than one kid. You know, you'll you'll have a lot of kids that you're you touch. Um, but if you just create those friendships with your counterparts, with the people you work with, and it's only two years. I mean, nothing nothing really sustainable mm -mm. seems to happen in two years. We learned that really early on. Um, 
And so you have to work really hard if you, you do pick up a big project. And oftentimes you're, you're okay with a little failure um, in that and you start to also lower your standards of, you know, what is your success here? Is your success knowing the shop owner by name and them knowing what you like to order at this restaurant? Is, is it a success that you read a lot of books and you inspired other kids to read with you? Or, you know, it has to be like these smaller things than, you know, I'm gonna go change the agriculture of Lesotho and like cure the rain problem that we're having right now. And you know, you're never gonna, this country is a really broken government. It's, I learned that firsthand with a organization that works on justice and peace. And um, there's a lot of things that need to be improved. So if you can, Peace Corps is about working in the village. It's about the small impacts and yeah. What's the question again? You feel like you're making a difference. Do I feel like I'm making a difference. Um, <laughs> I think in the way that, um, I hope I don't get like sued or <laughs> fired from Peace Corps. I this think, won't come out for at least okay. two years. <laughs> I, I, think, I think in the way that um, Peace Corps advertises change and like glorify, glorifies like the Peace Corps experience, I would say no, I'm not living that, that, that experience that's advertised. Um, I, I, I would say, um, um, this this country has actually made more of an impact on me than I than I think I've made an impact on it, and um, and you know I've learned so much about myself from it, but it, but as far as an impact with like my with like you know interacting with like my village and especially like being being a teacher you know I'm not only working like within the education system but I'm you know I'm I'm responsible for for like growing and like teaching these kids. Um, English fluency and that's that's kind of that's we don't I don't uh, just have pressure from the Ministry of Education but I also have expectations that like Peace Corps sets for me and um, do I live up to it to those expectations well you know I try and that's all I can do um, but I think um, it really what has like kept me positive and like out of like you know the depths of cynicism <laughs> that you can get into here um, is like it really is those like micro interactions that that she was talking about that like um, when I when I walk through town I can like randomly you know someone will say hey Danielle and I'm like hey nice to see you again <laughs> you know and it's just like so great that like you know you you just like build those those like micro relationships and and like that's what it's counted for me you know they they like preach the whole you're gonna make a grassroots change. Do you know how small a fucking grassroot is? It is <laughs> a blade in bajillions, infinity amount of blades. And like, that's how big our change is supposed to be. And so once I kind of visualized that, I was like, oh, then you know what? Then I think I've met my blade. I think, I, I think, <laughs> I've, I think I've done a good job, you know? So myths about Africa that I'm gonna crack. Um, <laughs> Lesotho has a very obese population. <laughs> Not every child is like skin and bones and starving, and um, and they're they're very proud to be large women and large men. I would say it's 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 mostly older women, but um, there's there's a thing here um, where it's like the bigger you are, it's like the more happy and like rich and wealthy you are. And you're just like so settled in yourself and your big family and everything, which is like completely different from how like um, physical appearance is supposed to be seen in America um, and how Africa has portrayed us. <laughs> I hate being called fat. I hate it. <laughs> We're say, not even fat. They say, oh, it's and I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to be like that. Um, they don't call you fat. Yeah, yes, they do no, all the time. they fucking do. Oh, as yeah. in a compliment. As in a compliment. It's, it's a compliment. But it's hard for us to take yeah. it as a compliment. Right. Like, I feel I'm really so good. <laughs> like, Struggle. All the time, I'm like, really, Struggle. I've gotten fat, and then, you know, I haven't stepped on a scale in seven <laughs> months, and like, you know my pants maybe don't fit. Oh, <laughs> They're feeding us too much papa. Um, okay, the myth about Africa that I have. Um, or message you want to send to America. Message I want to send. So I said earlier about I talked about HIV, and um, you know, Lesotho is the second highest prevalence rate, but. In, in the US, we don't really, we don't know how to conceptualize what HIV looks like because it doesn't look like anything. And so these images that 
these images that I think Americans or other countries have of, you know, Africa, other nations that have high prevalence of HIV is sickly and is AIDS, you know, where it gets to that point that your blood, your CD4 count is so low that you are dying. And usually it's from other things like TB and, um, you know, that takes over and your viral load is too high. Um, but, you know, you imagine these people that are, are very sick, they're unproductive with their lives. They, they aren't taking any medication at all. They don't have any help, you know, and then you get here and you just, you don't see it. Like if it's one in four, I have no idea. You can't see HIV and people don't talk about it. And, um, you know, that's a whole other stigma thing, but it's, it's something to work in that's really beautiful and sad at the same time. There's tons of funerals and you'll never know why that person died. Um, but it's not, it's not this culture of sick people. It's this culture that's like, it's a country that's really beautiful and they're really trying to improve their lives. And they, they eat pretty healthy. A lot of people have gardens in their backyard, like we're standing on one right now. And, um, and so, you know, the hardest part is, I think even before I got here, I had no idea of how to see this culture because I didn't want to look at it with eyes that were, were already, you know, had preconceived notions of what an HIV high prevalence looked like. But I think often we do that. And so coming here, I think Losutu surprised me in a lot of ways. Um, there's things that are hard about that because of people not talking about their status, but you just, like, you can't tell. And um, that, you know, you, you'll never know if someone has HIV or not. And you can't, it's really beautiful to break down the stigma that people may have of it too. And to say, you know, I'm a normal working person, I take ARVs and I'm, I'm able to live with HIV because it is, it's, it's, there's no cure, but it's not a death sentence. And so I've learned a lot about it here that I wouldn't have known about before. Just, it's a complex, complex, um, you know, virus. It's a complex thing to live with, but you can be healthy and productive and they do it here all the time. And that's been a huge surprise to me. Um, as far as the king, um, you know, I was, I was just saying that like, he's, he's just more of kind of like a figurehead. I hope he doesn't like see this and beat me <laughs> after that. Um, you know, I mean, like there, like there was one time when he when he did have to make like a, like a critical decision between like the prime minister and the military and and, and everything this past year. Um, but he really doesn't have that that huge of a presence here. It's just kind of like history. Comment on the difference between the system of government or the role of the monarchy, the system of government of South Africa, Swaziland, and Lesotho. Like, how do you see the differences there? Um, I think Lesotho has modeled their government off, you know, what Britain mm -hmm. has done. Um, the prime minister is kind of like, like our, our president. Um, he oversees everything and he makes the decisions. Um, King Letzie is just royal family. And honestly, it's very controversial too of how the, the kings and the princes succeeded each other. Mm -hmm. um, it started with King Mishweshwe, that's what you'll hear. There's Mishweshwe Day, it's, there is huge pride in the king, mm -hmm. but the current king is just like a descendant of what created this country. Um, mm -hmm. And he's just a, he's very royal, people respect him. What about Swaziland? I don't know much about Swaziland. Same. Yeah. yeah. No much. Yeah. Okay. No, the king's really important there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I really don't know much yeah. about it. I mean, I, I wouldn't say, there was the king's birthday and it was a really cold day and I guess there was very low attendance at his, at his birthday. Um, I, just because the people of Lesotho, they live very rural. Um, it's hard to get places. And so in the lowlands, there's like, there's the newspapers and there's the headlines and you know, you see everything and you're up to date on politics. And there's a lot of politics are hot here. They're like intense and nobody agrees. And it's, you know, it's pretty shitty. And um, I'm not allowed to say opinions actually. So um, it's just oh, hard yeah. for the people. Um, it's hard for the people to live, but when you're in the villages and for us up here we don't we don't know anything about it and so people are separated from that a lot they they, they don't get too involved cool the prime minister's coming tomorrow to Tabatseka, so we'll see awesome i've never seen what he looks like i don't even know thank you guys okay alicia <laughs> hey. this is home this is home what's it called it's a rondeval um, so it's not a what's the difference between a rondeval and a yurt a rondeval whew. I'm not really sure, but I know the roof is different. So this is a thatch roof okay. and it's made out of straw, hay, and piled on top of each other. And then usually the rest could be mud and concrete bricks. So mine's concrete bricks and then it turns into mud. Okay. It's really awesomely insulated. Let's go check and, it out. Yeah, let's check it out. 
Wow, it's really windy today. All Super right, windy. Place. Thanks. Whew. Yeah, this okay. is Ronda Ball Weasley. Let's go take a tour of this amazing structure. Let's go over okay. here. What do we have? Well, this is going to be my wardrobe. So I've uh -huh. improvised. I've made friends with the local hardware. <laughs> and this is, I saw this off of pallets, shipping pallets. So okay. eventually I'll have a rod through here, hang some clothes. Okay. And um, you've got electricity. Yeah, I'm pretty let's, lucky. Let's, let's see if it works. They call me Poshcore. I've got a dull light. Take a look at that. <laughs> a light. In a rendezvous. So what? Uh, so let's come over here and let's look at your kitchen area. Yeah. So this is my kitchen. Everything's done in one room in these houses. Um, we have our water filters. This is really important in Peace Corps. Um, mm. They like to care a lot about our health. Mm. Although Lesotho has some of the cleanest water in the world. Okay. So yeah. have you ever gotten sick? I've never gotten sick. All right. Right on. Actually, you got once. Some, okay, okay. I had the it. How often are power cuts here? Um, whenever there's high winds or thunderstorms, um, it'll happen Aren't sometimes there through high the night. Winds a lot. I mean, what's high winds like? Super high. Super high. Oh. Like yesterday or it the day before when it was lines. a dust storm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just shuts out. Um, sometimes For electricity how long? through the night or just a couple hours or mm. a couple minutes. So it snows here, by the way, doesn't it? It does it snow. Yeah. But you haven't seen it yet because you just got the tail end of the winter. Um, I saw some in our training village when I lived for three months in a different, in the lowlands actually at 4,000 feet. So okay. that was cold. Yeah, there's no, we, we rely on gas heaters and we try to save our money so we don't turn them on very often. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you yeah. do, so that's the way you heat this. You don't use wood. No, I don't have like a wood burn. But some people do? Corinne seems to have one. We're okay. not sure if it works, but some people okay. do. But what about the locals here? Locals do. They have wood burning? Mm -hmm. Some do. Um, it Is often deforestation a problem? Here? No. Mm -hmm. so I mean, much. all the trees are pretty much planted. Okay. Um, some, uh, especially up high, we're kind of past tree line right. um, in most areas, at least for, it's like a high desert, kind of. How yeah. much would a place like this, it's just one room, mm -hmm. cost somebody if they wanted to rent out a place and live in a small town like this? Because this is a town, it's not a village. Yeah, yeah, I live in town, so I have the amenities of a town. You have shops, you have a place mm -hmm. with Wi-Fi. There's roads, they're paved. Um, Come closer. And whew, what would it cost? I learned this the other day, and I was actually kind of upset, you know, because like we are as Peace Corps volunteers, you know, think that we're given so much. Mm -hmm. And the Peace Corps experience is one very unique in itself. But economically and financially, our support from our orgs is, um, it's two, like 250 rand a month, which right now it's 14 to one. So Somewhere around 20, 20 bucks. Dollars. Yeah. 20 US dollars. Yeah. 20 US so dollars to rent this per month, not per, per day. Month. Yeah. <laughs> not and maybe week. with my electricity and the amount I charge my computer, right. a little bit more. Maybe 30 bucks. Yeah. Uh, I like to watch Broad City. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Broad City? Broad City. Broad City. Okay. Oh, you would like it. Huh? Yeah. And that concludes this episode of the Wander Learn podcast, where we explore travel technology and transformation. If you'd like to see the show notes with links to what we talked about, or if you'd like to comment on the show, or if you'd like to ask me a question, then go to wanderlearn.com and click on the latest episode. If you'd like to connect with me, just remember F Tapon. That's my first initial and my last name. F Tapon is the username I use on all social media. You can also get to my website by going to ftapon.com. Here's one last reason to remember F Tapon. If you like what I do and want to get rewarded for supporting my projects, then go to patreon.com slash Yep, you guessed it, FTAPON. That's where you can pick up some sweet rewards for as little as $1 a month. And remember, subscribing to the WanderLearn podcast helps, but downloading each episode helps even more. Please share the podcast, review it, and sign up for my newsletter at wanderlearn.com. This show was edited by Rejoice Tapon. The music was composed by Eric Stratman. This is Francis Tapon, encouraging you to wander and learn.